Hi, I'm Evan Lewis, uh, and welcome you back to Evan Esent, my YouTube channel, talking mostly about lathe projects. And most of these projects have been about gadgets you can make as appliances for your lathe rather than something useful. And uh, this time it's no different. We're going to be making a milling and grinding attachment for the lathe. Now, several uh, months ago, I bought three treadmill motors, direct current motors that usually work on about 180 volts. And I've already made a previous YouTube video about how I placed the biggest one of these motors in the lathe itself so that I could have variable speed, which I enjoy very much. And then I decided to use the middle sized motor to install in the uh, drill stand. And there was a small motor left over. Well, not very small, but it's a bit smaller. And uh, I wondered about how I might utilize that. And I sat it on top of the cross slide and thought, hmm, it might be handy to have a milling and uh, grinding attachment on the lathe. There was, was actually such an attachment um, sold by Boxford originally. Anyway, that's what this uh, project was all about, is installing this motor on the lathe to use as, um, for milling and grinding. This is the brushed DC motor that I used, and here we see it installed. I'd like to show you the finished product before we start, so you know what we're aiming for. In this case, I've got the motor mounted on the cross slide directly. And here it's mounted on a vertical slide, so it acts more like a conventional milling machine. So you can raise and lower the tool. That's the main advantage of having it on the slide. Uh, and I'm using it here to make a hexagonal nut, which came out very well in the end. So this is what we have to make. The main component of this is an ER32 collet holder, which I machined. I have another uh, ER32 collet holder, which is mounted on a... Uh, Morse Taper 3 for going directly in the spindle and this one is to be mounted directly on the shaft of the motor. It doesn't have any belt or gearing or anything so it seemed like a simple way to go and the motor revs up to about 8400 RPM which I thought would be fast enough. So I took the nut from the commercially made ER32 collet holder, produced a thread on here and a taper to place the collet inside and uh, I've got a good collection of collets uh, both metric and imperial so this means I would be able to mount all kinds of tools into the collet holder and uh, that includes milling tools and grinding tools and some various bits and pieces that I have to fit the Dremel. So this is actually a Dremel um, collet holder that goes into the big collet. That allowed me to mount small grinding tools and things onto it. So just testing it out there. Uh, those uh, grinding tools were very, very soft and just wore out in no time at all. This is how the cross slide is actually mounted on the Boxford lathe and similar to some other lathes too. It has this thing called a spigot, an upside down shaped cone which fits into this hole and is locked into place with a couple of grub screws or set screws on the side. And that's it. So it's fairly simple mounting and we're going to copy that. This is the mounting disc that I made, similar to one that I've used on previous attachments for the lathe. It consists of two parts. The spigot itself and the disc. That's the underside of it with a bolt in the center for holding the spigot on. These are the dimensions of the spigot and it just has a hole in the center which is threaded to bolt it in place. This is how the spigot was turned with the 30 degree taper created by using rotating the compound slide around 30 degrees to machine it. So it's pretty straightforward. I happen to have a piece of 80 millimeter diameter stainless steel bar 300 millimeters long that I got from a scrap metal dealer and so I like making things out of stainless because it doesn't rust and looks really nice so here I'm facing off the surface of it to make a nice finish using a carbide tip tool. To part off the disc I'm using a rear mounted parting tool using a tool post uh, that I made myself that's in another video actually and the idea of this is that the cutting tool for parting is upside down and it allows all the swarf to drop out with gravity the biggest problem with having the parting tool the right way up is that all the uh, swarf accumulates and jams alongside the sides of the slot you're cutting and the tool itself and jams everything up. This is a close-up so you can see how the swarf is just dropping out with gravity and uh, keeps it clear and uh, you don't have any trouble with the tool jamming. And by having a rear mounted tool post with the tool upside down you don't have to run the lathe backwards which is a problem for these boxed lathes that have a screw-on chuck. Now the disc is 
faced off to the required thickness and to produce a nice finish on the opposite side where we've just been parting. And that more or less completes this part. The digital tachometer shows a speed of 683 RPM and we'll bump that up to about 800. Next I'm mating a mounting plate. This is a 10 millimeter thick steel plate, probably about 100 millimeters wide that I happen to have. And I'm having to machine a slot in it to fit the shape of the motor that's going to be bolted onto it. The motor has a fan and we need a slot that the fan can fit down inside. And to cut that slot out, I don't have a milling machine, so I drill a whole lot of holes and grind it out with each grinder. And here I'm drilling a couple of holes that the motor will screw onto. I'm using my pillar drill, which has the uh, speed controller the same as the lathe, with the controller that came from China for $65. Uh, it goes in forward and reverse, and by being able to vary the speed, I hardly ever have to change the belts. So I'm running here at 1000 RPM, drilling these holes. Oh, I see I'm a bad boy. The safety guru is a little bit getting after me. I've forgotten to take my watch off. I've got my long short sleeves, the earmuffs on, wedding ring removed, glasses. But I forgot to take my watch off. You'll see in the other clips that I have taken my watch off in the end. I think the rest of this video is self-explanatory and won't need any commentary. And uh, I'll defer the construction of the um, ER32 collet holder to the next video. So I've just taken a little bit off that fan there so it doesn't hit and I mount this on here. Okay, it's finished. In this plastic box is a full wave rectifier which takes the 240 volt power supply and converts it to direct current but in the process the voltage will be increased to close to 400 volts and the motor runs at 180 so there's a potential for burning it out.
and bought a um, double pole, double throw switch, which will allow me to switch directions. But actually, the reason I bought it was so that um, I could switch between full wave and half wave rectifier because of the voltage being too high. Half wave will give you half the average voltage. Finally, with a coat of paint, it's looking quite good. Now, the next uh, video will be about how to make the uh, collar holder, which is actually already seen in this video, but uh, we haven't actually shown the construction yet.